There has been an increase in homelessness and youth in Portage County, how the situation is being handled. Delays on lethal drugs now leaves three men on death row waiting. The queen has contracted COVID-19, her symptoms and more. It must be your lucky day. McDonald's Shamrock Shake is back as your President's Day Flashcast starts now. This is TV2 News. Good Monday morning, Portage County, and thank you for joining us. My name is Josh Aponte. And I'm Anthony Zacharias. Your time is 1030. Let's get into today's top headlines. Kent State University has sent out its annual survey regarding sexual violence and contact to students. The results of these surveys will help the university in training, education, and support to those who are affected. Students can anticipate the survey to take 15 minutes and all information they input will remain classified. The university is currently offering many resources for those who are affected by some of the topics included in the survey. Kent State and Cleveland State Universities are partnering up to allow students to earn a law degree in six years. After earning three full years of study at Kent State, students can then become eligible for Cleveland State's Cleveland Marshall College of Law. This new program will begin with the 2022 class entering Cleveland State's College of Law. Good morning, Portage County. Kayla Earnhardt here to bring you the weather. This week starts off pretty promising, but don't get to attach the warmth and sun just yet. Winter isn't leaving us anytime soon. Today we start in a sunny 49 degrees. Although it is sunny, it does feel like it's 36 outside. The humidity is pretty low today, just 46. And if you have any plans, not to worry. You'll be able to see where you're going because visibility today is 10 miles. And on to our daily forecast. It's going to start pretty sunny this morning at a 47 degrees. Later on into the day, as we get into the afternoon, that sun is going to try to retreat back into the clouds, but the temperature is going to rise to a 56. And as we go into the night, it is going to drop back down to 48 degrees, and that sun will say goodbye because it's going to be cloudy. Our weekly forecast, I'm going to let you know we're riding the Millennium Force this week because we're going up and right back down. It's going to be a high of 58 today, mostly sunny, and tomorrow there's going to be something about the way that street looks because it will be rainy. Although it will rain, it is going to be a high of 61 degrees. Wednesday is going to be cloudy with a high of 39. Thursday starts our snow showers. Winter is back, guys. 38 degrees is our high on Thursday, and those snow showers are going to continue into Friday. On Saturday, the snow showers will be gone, and it will be 33 degrees. On Sunday, the, sh the sun is going to be a little shy. It's going to be hiding behind those clouds, and it's going to be 39. Well, my friends, that's all I have for you today, but don't forget to head on over to KentWire.com for more of the latest updates on weather, news, and sports. This has been Kayla Earnhardt. Back to you guys on the desk. Rates of homelessness have risen partly due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Ravenna School District has asked for a grant fund to help gain resources to help the youth and their families who are homeless. Other resources in Portage County include a case management program through the county, a shelter, and program through Kent State. A shelter named the Haven of Portage County is set to open soon, which is expected to help those who are homeless get back on their feet. Ohio high school students will soon be required to take a financial literacy class to graduate. The materials to be taught in this course includes money management, paying taxes, managing debt, and investing. The new requirement will affect 475,000 students statewide. This class will be officially required after June 2022. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine has delayed the executions of three men who were convicted of murder they were set to be executed this summer. This comes after the governor's office said that pharmaceutical companies will not supply the state with the drugs for a lethal injection. 
Now the men are on a three-year hold with set dates in 2025. Queen Elizabeth has tested positive for coronavirus. It was officially announced Sunday that the Queen is experiencing mild cold-like symptoms. These reports come as the 95-year-old is celebrating her 70th year on the throne. The palace said that the Queen is fully vaccinated and is continuing her daily routines while expected to receive daily medical attention. Canadian officials have froze financial assets of people involved within the ongoing protests over COVID-19's mandates as of Sunday. 206 financial products were frozen that included bank and corporate accounts of individuals and businesses. Businesses that have shown support towards the demonstrators have also faced consequences and closures. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. How's it going, Portage County? I'm Michael Neenan, and I'm here to get you caught up on last night's sporting events. Now here, we jump right into the NBA's 71st annual All-Star Game here in Cleveland. It is Team LeBron against Team Durant. Kevin Durant was unfortunately unable to play, but our very own LeBron James, the kid from Akron, got to play. Now here, we have Ja Morant, who goes up for the dunk. Grizzlies are currently third in the East. Kid is currently leading them to a top seed. What a guy. Now, LeBron James, he tries to lob it to himself, but accidentally goes in. Now here, the currently the top of the MVP race, Joel Embiid goes up for the dunk. And now here, Steph Curry, he pulls up from his usual range and he hits the three. He makes it look easy. And Trey Young, Lobs it to John Morant once again. Do I see deja vu? It's the same connection. Now Nikola Jokic, he passes it to DeRozan. DeRozan goes down to the baseline, but he kicks it out to Curry. And he shoots from his usual range again. Hits another three. The man is on fire. Now LeBron passes to Curry once again. Pulls up from Curry range. He would hit 16 threes on the night and get 50 points. He would pull away with the All-Star Game MVP. Team LeBron would win 163 to 160. Now, the KSU men's basketball team is set to play Ball State tomorrow in the MAC. With a current win streak of eight games, the Flashes look to capture a ninth straight win against the Cardinals and get within half a game of the two-seeded Toledo Rockets. Boasting a seven and eight record against MAC opponents, the Cardinals should be a manageable win for the Flashes. The tip-off is at 7 o'clock. That's all the time I have for sports today. Be sure to follow our Twitter at TV2KSU Sports and tune in to Sports Corner tonight at 8 p.m. for all sports-related updates within the area. From TV2 Sports, I'm Michael Neenan, and let's get back to the desk. Many veterans are turning to yoga to treat post-traumatic stress disorder. The Veterans Yoga Project is offering free yoga classes, both virtual and in person. Participants, uh, the U national nonprofit organization has 100 yoga classes a week offered to both the veterans and their families by serving those who have served the community. St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner and McDonald's is getting ready by officially bringing back the Shamrock Shake. Starting Monday, McDonald's will serve not only its classic dessert, but its Oreo-flavored counterpart, the Shamrock McFlurry. The longtime favorite Shamrock Shake was first sold in 1970 and is made with vanilla soft-serve ice cream, mint flavors, and whipped topping. The Shamrock Shake and the Oreo Shamrock McFlurry will only be available for a limited time. That's all the time we have for your Monday Flashcast. For updates on all these stories and more, visit KentWired.com and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at KentWired. I'm Anthony Zacharias. And I'm Josh Aponte. Have a great day, Portage County. Your messages. Or telling a friend you're on your way. They could be the last words you ever type. Make sure you get where you're going.
Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. How could you not love him? 